Hey people, how are you? Well, quarantine diaries. Day, I don't know what day. We've been on, not shelter in place, but uh, restricted, restricted access to many, many things and stay at home for quite a while now. I almost forgot it was Saturday. Does that happen to you? I mean, especially now, do you lose track of the days? Well, anyway, welcome to my channel. Welcome back. And today I think I'm going to talk a little bit about the psychology of writing, of being a writer, of being me as a writer. Because I can't talk for everybody. I can't speak for everybody. But I'm going to just talk a little bit about my process and how things work for me. And just chat a little bit. So... If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now and hit the ringer bell down there so you get notified when I have a new video out. Pull up a chair, get ready, and we'll have a chat. And just like that, I'm back. Oh, I tell you, the past few weeks have been so surreal. Honestly, I mean, I mentioned it in one of my last videos, but life feels very bizarre. It, it's like when I wrote the Fury Unbound series, I did not expect to be living in what felt like a dystopian world within the next year or two. I always knew, it, you know, things like this can happen. I mean, I went through the HIV epidemic, um, watching it come out of what was originally the gay man's disease and, you know, sweep through the world. And at that time, at that time, AIDS was a death sentence. Now it's not. Um, it was frightening, you know, and especially when we realized anybody can get it. And you can get it in a number of ways. You know, blood transmission, um, fluid, bodily fluid transmission, sex. Uh, when I was in college, you know, during the late 70s, um, we didn't think about condoms. Oh, we didn't. You know, it's like I was on the pill. That was all the protection I thought I needed. And condoms were um, old-fashioned. Now, it's like, yeah, you know, they're vital, important, um, even if you're on the pill, you know, if you don't know your partner that well, if you, if you haven't talked to them a while, you know, if you haven't learned everything you need to know and seen their test results, condoms are important. But now also HIV is definitely no longer just a death sentence. It can be managed. There are new drugs being, being created every day. Um, and I fully expect there will be for the coronavirus, too. I mean, I expect them to find a vaccine. There's no reason why they shouldn't. They found vaccines for the flu. They found vaccines for a number of other conditions. But until they do, right now it's in a pandemic stage and it's a dangerous stage. And for those of us who are immune compromised, it's even more dangerous. Um, no, it won't kill most people who get it. Yes, it will kill a lot of people who get it. When you think of the percentage of people who are actually contracting, contacting, contracting the virus and the percentage of people dying, it's pretty high. And when you look at the vast numbers in the world, it's even bigger. Um, you know, 3%, 4% of a, Hundred is only three or four, but when you get three or four percent of a hundred thousand, of a hundred million, of a billion people, you're talking a whole lot of people. So we're being careful here, and we are not under um, shelter in place at this point. But all the bars and restaurants are closed except for takeout. Um, most of the malls are closed. My dentist closed down to all but emergency cases. The hospitals here are swamped. Kaylee wants in. I can hear her. 
but she was knocking over my webcam and she was once again loving the heck out of my monitor and you know kind of knocking it around and so she gets to stay outside while I film this but yeah our restaurants are closed um, bars are closed any non-essential thing is closed pretty much no nails no hair but that's okay because it's important to squash this if we can um, I think it's past past controlling but now we just have to manage it and try and bring the the uh, rate of infection down so so life is going to be different for a while for people and I you know it's something we all have to kind of accept and just manage and deal with life is different life is not going to go back to the same for quite a long time if ever uh, things will change things will shift and you know things do have to adapt things evolve life evolves we just have to evolve with it so for now sam and i are here and i am planning out my garden for this summer because i am going to be getting some raised beds that we're going to put together and i'm going to be making a large garden for organic vegetables so we have some fresh veg fresh fruits and veggies during the summer and maybe enough that i can actually put some in the freezer um organic food is much safer for me with the mcas anyway so you know it's like i might as well grow some of my own oh um, moving on from that, I get asked a lot about some of my jewelry on here. This is a moonstone necklace, moonstone with little silver beads. It's a vintage necklace. I got it off Etsy. Um, this is lab created alexandrite because if it were real alexandrite, that ring would be about $30,000. I don't have 30000 to spend on one ring. Um, but it's lab created alexandrite and it's well well made because it does shift alexandrite shifts in different light spectrums to different colors um and this does that and it's really it's beautiful it's in rose gold and this is um simply citrine no not citrine this is smoky quartz with um, silver and it's got white topaz on either side this is sujolite and amethyst in silver. And this is so various forms of topaz. Swiss blue topaz, London blue topaz, and white blue to, or white topaz in silver. And this is mystic topaz in silver. And these are tanzanite and diamonds in white gold. Um, this I bought from a jewelry store. The rest of these, I got this off Etsy and the rest got off eBay. I love eBay. I, I'm, I frequent eBay far too much. I, I get my antlers from eBay. I've got some really incredible pieces of wood from eBay. I get a lot of crystals from eBay. In fact, I just got this black moonstone from eBay. Um, so yeah, I was going to talk about writer's block too. Now, a lot of people ask me if I get writer's block. I don't. I sometimes get stuck, but that's not writer's block to me. To me, writer's block is when you are so burned out that you literally cannot come up with anything. When you are just creatively toast. For me, I sometimes do get stuck on a part in my novel, you know, whichever book I'm writing at the time. But usually it's when, A, I've taken too many days off between writing, because I do best if I write at least something every day. Um, I keep the continuity much easier. Or B, sometimes I get stuck because like right now, I'm having a little hard time. I mean, I will get the book done. It'll be out on April 27th, Sunbroken will be. But the whole coronavirus 
coronavirus um, mess, for lack of a better word, has kind of dragged my attention away. So I need to stay off social media as much as I can. I need to quit dwelling on it. I need to focus on my work. I need to focus on things that make me happy because it will take my anxiety away from there. Now, I don't normally have a lot of anxiety problems. I think I do this time simply because it's an unknown factor. There's not a plan of action yet for this. So I'm, I'm somewhat anxious and nervous because we really don't have a good grasp on how to deal with this yet. They are working, however, on vaccines. And, um, oh, I was very, very thrilled because you, you guys know that I love Project Runaway and I love Christian Siriano who is the mentor on Project Runway, and he won his season of Project Runway. And he basically offered the mayor of New York, um, he offered um, Cuomo the services of all of his seamstresses and, you know, um, tailors and stuff, anybody, his shop. And he said they were working from home, but they would stop making his line and start all making the N95 masks that the hospital needs so much. And the New York mayor, he took him up on it. And it was just so nice to see people pitching in like that. And I'm hoping some of the other designers actually join in. But, um, but yeah, I, I will do much better if I try to keep my focus off the virus, the pandemic, every minute of the day, you know, because part of me wants to be out there retweeting things, retweeting information, retweeting um, resources, things like that, but it does get to me after a while, so I need to monitor myself and crack down on myself, um, and that will help me get back into the swing of writing. I also find that sometimes if I am blocked, it's usually because I've gone off track with the story. And there will be a place where it was flowing really well and when it stopped, I go back to that place and I look and I usually try to force the story instead of just let it flow out. One of the reasons why I can't give you better advice on this is because the way my mind works, and I I found this out recently by taking a really good class called um, Write Better Faster, and it's not, it, Becca Symes runs it, and it's not a class that is intended to help you write faster in terms of, you know, write this way and you'll increase your input, but it's in, intended to help you find your strengths as a writer and rely on them, and that actually helps your process move along faster and more smoothly. And it did help me a whole lot because I, I never have been able to plot my books very easily. And I always felt almost like a little bit of a failure because I couldn't plot my books. It's like, Every time I tried, I'd run into a standstill. But when I just sit down and start to write, the book is there. So finding out that one of my strengths in particular, all of my strengths are geared toward achievement and competition and strategy and stuff, except this one strength, which basically what it means is my subconscious takes over the plotting process and the planning process for that and it churns it all together, and then it coughs it up when I need it. So when I sit down and I'm ready to start the book, it's there because my subconscious has been doing the work. My subconscious has been going, oh, let's put this together and that together and that together. And it's so much explained why I have always been able to foreshadow things without knowing what I'm doing. In fact, there are so many times I've written something and I'm like, what the hell is that for? Why did I write that? It makes no sense to me now. 
and then two chapters down the line, all of a sudden I was like, oh, it was foreshadowing for this event. I get it now. That's why that happened. So my subconscious does the foreshadowing for me too. So that doesn't make me a very good teacher for you as an aspiring writer in terms of telling you how to plot and write because I don't do that consciously. I do that on a subconscious level, which is good for me. Not so good if I wanted to give writing advice. I can give practical advice, you know, some practical advice, but but stuff like that, mm -mm, you know, if you are not a writer like me with that strength, you know, of subconscious processing, then you're better off getting the advice from somebody else because my advice is basically, but I just do it. And that sounds so snarky in a way, but it is true. I just do it because my subconscious is doing it for me. I actually like having that, but it also can kind of feel nerve-wracking at times. It's like, well, it's next book, next book going to be there. I'll find out when I get there. And yeah, it's there. I finally, after this many books, you know, after over 60-some books and 25 years in the business, I finally trust that, yeah, I am going to have the books there. It, there are going to be stories there. There are so many ideas I have that I can't possibly write them all. In fact, I have three new series on the back burner in the back of my mind that I'd like to write. I just have to find the time for it. And that's in addition to Whisper Hollow, and that's in addition to The Wild Hunt, and that's in addition to, you know, the last of the fury and the last of the bewitching bedlam and no i don't know when those are gonna be out but but there are just so many ideas that i can't possibly i think write them all in my lifetime which kind of gives me some pain actually um the concept that all these ideas i have you know, may go with me, you know, at some point. Well, I guess every writer might have that, you know, or some writers have that, that fear or that. It's not a fear. It's just that slight sense of dread. So, yeah, writer's block for me is simply I've gotten off track. I stopped letting the story flow and I started trying to force it. So you might try that, you know, if you get writer's block, you might try that. You might try going back to the last time it wrote smoothly and take a look and see if you try to meddle with the process. That might work. Ah, chatting on a few other subjects. Um, as some of you heard in my, or in my Facebook readers group, I have started getting the rights back to Otherworld. I will not be putting these books out again until I have all the rights to all the books back and can do what I want with the series. Um, I will not be rewriting the series like I did the Whisper Hollow series. I will not be tightening it up more than running it through an editor again because 21 books, you know, the last three wouldn't need it because those were written after I went indie. But the first 18, yeah, I, I could probably spend a year on redoing those. But I'm not going to. However, once I have all the rights back, I will be putting them out, you know, in ebook and in uh, POD form. Um, I can't get all the rights back until the sales fall on the ones they still have. So I'm <clears throat> encouraging my readers to please, um, you know, if you're recommending my work, recommend my indie work. And recommend The Wild Hunt right now, and recommend Whisper Hollow, and The Indigo Court, and just let other world alone for now. And when I have the rights back to all of the books, 
then I'll be able to put out box sets and all sorts of wonderful things like that. I'm really excited. I did not think I would be as excited as I am to realize that I'm getting the rights back to that series. And I realize I kind of had, I kind of had to let it go and, and go with the thought of I may never get the rights back to these because I didn't think I was going to be able to. Um, but now that I've realized I can and I've got part of them back, I want all of them back. And as I tell my readers in the Facebook group, once I get all the rights back and get them all organized and out again, you know, then I may be able to write another few books in it. I can't promise, but I, I would probably try. And I can't promise it'd be a regular thing, but I think at that point I would feel more comfortable writing in the series again. So, so recommend the other books instead. And uh, yeah, and if you can't get some of the books in Kindle, that's because I will have the rights back to them and I will not be putting them out again yet. Um, so on to other things. I was going to do a plan with me video shortly, but there's not a whole lot to plan except my writing schedule because we're not going out anywhere. Um, I may still do that. Or I think maybe I will do next time another uh, video on magic and tarot and maybe I'll do another tarot review. Um, I could also show you some spreads if you want, some tarot spreads and layouts. Um, oh, let's see. I think I do want to do another video on, on my magic, though. I think I maybe want to talk about the Fae or working with elemental energy because I really enjoyed this last video I did where I talked about my magic and I realized people really did want to hear it and so I think I think it's time as I said in that video it feels like it's time again for me to just start talking about this to people and not just be so reserved on it and I was never reserved because of not wanting people to know obviously I've been out as a witch ever since I became a witch I never hid in the closet, in the broom closet. But when I started getting way too many requests for help, and f I mean requests like fix my life, not just can you tell me this or that. It was like fix my life, fix my life. When I started getting so many people writing, begging me to fix their lives and fix mistakes they had made, I got exhausted and I had to shut down. I had to shut down that part of myself from the public. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll start doing some videos on magic again. And maybe actually start talking about potential, you know, some rituals you could do, um, ways to use crystals, things like that. If you're interested in that, let me know. I think I'm going to wrap this one up and lead, let it be a little shorter than my usual ones. It's still, I think, going to run around 25 minutes. I don't seem to be able to shut up. Uh, I'm really good at rambling. I just like to talk to people, for one thing. I'm not an extrovert, but I do enjoy talking about things to people, about writing and about books and about magic and, and life in general. and. So, yeah, I'm going to let you go, and we'll talk to you later, and my recap for Top Chef um, Season 17, Episode 2 will be up next week, and, oh, we'll see what else I come up with. I may be doing more videos, especially if we are sheltering in place or anything for a while, because it feels like one good way to communicate, and... You know, it's like, hey, why not? If I've got the time, why not do them? Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Take care. Be safe. 
self distance or um, social use social distancing self isolate if you need to and please if you if you aren't worried about the virus be worried for the people who have problems where it could kill them you know you're not alone in this it's not just you it's all of us together and it's going to take all of us together to make things better so talk to you later bye bye take care